welcome back to another vlog of a day in the life of a 20-year-old building a tech startup. For those of you that are new, my name's Eric. I am a computer engineering student at McGill, and I also minor in AI, and I recently got approached to start building this startup called Empor. Empor is short for Emporium, which means a marketplace, and basically it's a university student exclusive marketplace. It not only includes products, but also listing your services or reselling tickets. So let me show you what the website looks like right now in the early stages. First of all, I implemented a JWT authentication system to give authenticated users one hour long sessions. A user can only be authenticated if they have a McGill email, and you can see this when you go ahead and sign up. It will simply not let you proceed if your email is not a valid McGill email, and then to double down on that, we send a verification code to the user's email address to confirm it is indeed their own account. They then go ahead and paste the verification code here and they'll have a verified account they can log in with at any time. After they log in, they'll be able to see their profile picture at the top right as well as their full profile if they click here. On your own profile, you have the option to delete your own listings or edit your profile. This is what it looks like if you view somebody else's profile who actually has some ratings. Now on our homepage, we have our three main things, which are products for purchases or renting, any services such as tutoring or helping someone move in, and then our ticket resale. The services and tickets aren't implemented yet, but users can search for specific products like this couch. They can then go ahead and add this couch to their cart, and in their cart, they can adjust the quantity or remove items. I've been absolutely in love with coding recently because of this startup, and I'm talking maybe 12 to 13 hours of code every single day. It's insane. So I thought, what better than to show you guys what I actually do in a day in my life. So let me take you along right now. First of all, it's 8.45 a.m., which means I need to start working at my internship. So without going into too many details for confidentiality purposes, I'm a machine learning intern. I've basically been tasked with building models to automate a lot of the generic engineering processes. This mainly means using NLP, which is how machines understand human texts. For example, I use clustering to separate documents into groups. Right now, I'm looking into how we could implement the BERT model into our program, so I've literally been spending countless hours just reading a bunch of different articles. But enough with the boring stuff, let's hop back to the startup. All right, it's now 5 p.m., so that means I could close my work computer and start working on the startup. Most of the time, I don't even get up from my desk, I literally just switch computers. Today, I have two meetings, one with the co-founders to talk about the MVP, and one with the UI UX designer that I'm working with to figure out what we're gonna actually include on the final okay. website. Allow on every visit, allow on every visit, right? And then you'll see, it's gonna start getting your location at the bottom. Michael was like, change that to six minute walk instead of distance to listing, you know? Yeah, 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 like uh, approximately six minute walk, right? Like something, that's like easier for people to like browse. I've just been coding for the last eight hours and I realized I forgot to even record anything. I even forgot to eat or drink water in the last eight hours. I got so stuck in debugging. Let me show you what I got up to. So users can create their own listings by entering stuff like a title and photos, but I also wanted the ability to add the pickup location. It would stay anonymous, but it would allow users to filter by distance. Right now, you could only enter a distance within a certain radius of the McGill campus, and you could also search for specific locations. So now on the product cards, you can see the distance from your location to the pickup spot. One of the biggest things keeping me going is knowing that if I'm even 1% as successful as a Mark Zuckerberg, I'm going to be the only one to document this entire journey. That means not only do I get to share every single step of this whole process with you guys, but in a few months to a few years even, I could look back and see my growth to figure out what I need to do to improve. So if you want to join me on my journey, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. It's 1am now. I've been sat here for so long, but that's just the way it is. You need to keep showing up every week to make real progress. That takes it to 16 hours of work today. I'm absolutely exhausted. I need a break, so I'll see you tomorrow. All right, I just woke up. It's Saturday, and that means I get to spend the entire day working on the startup, which actually makes me kind of happy. It's really easy to work this much when you love what you're doing. So I'm actually going to be meeting up with another front-end developer on the team to go through all the design elements that we have. And to do that, we're going to go to the library. I know it's crazy to go to the library in the summer, but it's completely empty, air conditioned and has these crazy cool monitors. The 
instant I got to the library, we found a bug in our backend code which didn't allow us to restart the server for some reason. And the weirdest thing is, if I just reran the code, it would work sometimes but not others. Finally, after so much debugging, I found the issue and it was so stupid. Basically, my Hibernate schema was constantly updating so I had to change this to validate and change the port of my database. Now I have another issue, the images stopped rendering all of a sudden. Oh wait, it's actually not that bad, I just got an email explaining why. I basically need to change the rules in my buckets to allow authorized access. So the library actually closes at 7, so I decided to move to this cubicle and I get this entire space to myself now so I can get back to the grind. I'm actually pretty annoyed today because I was supposed to spend my entire time building out new features and doing stuff that's exciting, but I ended up spending maybe 6 hours a day on debugging alone and it's all because we had some hidden issue with our database. I was literally tearing my hair out at the library, I was almost going insane causing a scene around me. Like, and I'm like best buds with Stack Overflow right now because ChatGPT is absolutely useful was when it comes to solving serious issues so i just have to go back to the og roots i'm also pretty disappointed because i was supposed to go to the gym today but honestly this takes priority for me especially because the mvp is supposed to be released in around two weeks time i've spent the last hour just reading up on documentation for these firebase rules but i actually got it to work so i'm really satisfied anyways i'm gonna try coding for another hour or two i'm pretty close to burning out but i still have that little bit left in me i'll see you when i get back home all right, I just got back from the library. It's around 9 p.m. I actually took a bit of a longer break to go have dinner with some friends. Let's call it a mental health break. I'm gonna hop on a call with our front-end developer and try to fix some more bugs, and then that should be it for the day. Did you change the .env file? The module would be... Yeah, exactly, yeah. Okay, sick, it's working. It's perfect. Five days, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not as bad as yesterday, but today I'm stopping at 11.30 p.m. That makes today around a 10 hour workday, and that means I totaled 26 hours over the last two days that I've been making this video. I literally see code when I close my eyes. It's absolutely insane. And sometimes when I sleep, I even dream in code, if that makes sense. Now, it doesn't always look like this, but honestly, it's like this more often than not. This is also a bit of a special case because I'm trying to release my MVP in the next two weeks for when Frosh comes. The idea is if we could have some sort of listing with seniors on the app before we introduce it to the freshmen, that's the absolute best case scenario. And if we can get some freshmen onto the app at McGill, it's more likely to take off because they're more likely to use the app for as long as possible. But not only that, they're also the most likely to require the services and all of these new pieces of furniture, textbooks, etc that they never thought of when they first moved in. Plus, we all know how crazy some first years are with partying. It's like their animals let out of a cage, so that ticket resale market will be absolutely massive. If we could build up some sort of rapport with them for the long term, that might just give us that extra edge that might make us a successful company. But anyways, if you made it all the way to the end, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe. And also leave in the comments below what your favorite feature is about Empor. I'm actually really curious to see what you guys think. And if you had to change one thing, what would you actually do? I'll see you in the next one.